What is up? Facebook Live. I hope you're doing really, really well. I'm so excited to be here today. I'm going to be talking to a really good friend, Brooke Callen, and the work she's doing, which is super exciting. And I'm going to be making a, a pretty sweet announcement, if not today, maybe tomorrow. Um, so keep an eyeball out for that. What's up, Catherine? Good to see you, Catherine. It all go. Um, and we're just super excited. To, so today we're going to be talking about receiving. What's up, Sunita? Good to see you, girl. Uh, we're going to be talking about receiving. We're going to be talking about uh, Josh Plotkin. We're going to be talking about Josh Plotkin. Uh, good to see you, brother. Uh, if you guys can hear me, because sometimes my headphones do weird things, go ahead and just uh, hit a like button, hit a love button, and, and actually go ahead and also tell me where you are watching from today. And I also want to know um, your that as we get going but i'd love to hear your favorite thing about brooke where you are and what you're excited about today so let's get started miss brooke callen when she arrives we're gonna be talking like i said we're gonna be talking boundaries we're gonna be talking receiving we're gonna be talking belonging so lots of cool things it still says adding at the moment for you brooke so i'm assuming you're somewhere on your way but not exactly sure where you're at at the moment. So, because it's been a long time and I'm super excited to be back. I'm gonna be doing a lot more Facebook Lives um, in the next couple of weeks. And there's just a lot of cool things on the horizon for me that I'm super excited to share about. And what I wanna know from you guys, it still says adding, Brooke, come on. Where are you at? <laughs> there she is, let's try this again. Here we go. Facebook Live, man. It just, it uh, really gets you, really gets you. What's up, Tim? Good to see you. So guys, go ahead and comment. I wanna hear, um, Alyssa, what's going on, girl? Hey, I love it. Tim uh, and Josh, I love it. Good to see y'alls. So let's see, it looks like I'm gonna approve. What is going on? This is so funny. Let's see, so I'm gonna approve Brooke to come on and we'll get rocking here. Awesome. I love it. Sunita, good to see you, girl. And Brooke says she's here. I believe she's here. I think I think if we can just like all collectively put our minds and our hearts together, we'll get Brooke here in just a moment. It looks like uh, she still is adding. Okay. I'm going to try canceling you out, Brooke. I'm going to bring you back on. So those of you watching replay, I want to hear a hashtag replay so that we know there oh she God. is. It finally worked. Josh Plotkin, she's parachuting in right now. She did. I she just dropped in, yeah. Just dropped just in, just in. like the Super Bowl. Just, just off the chopper, I'm here, I'm live, what's up? The chopper. I've got, I've got the backpack, just threw it off, like, so famous, right? Hair flip, absolutely. Hair flip. I was totally in receiving mode, Matthew, so like that's absolutely. what took me so long. Absolutely, just receiving just the pre-game jujus and the excitement. What's up, Andrea? Good to see you as well. Lots of cool people. You can't see me. Can you okay, see me? Okay. Is this can you better? See me now? Yeah, I can see you and hear I you I can now. see you. Okay, good. Okay, lovely. Okay. Okay, perfect. Well, we'll do this then. Good. <laughs> so, guys, so Brooke is, is a dear friend, and Brooke runs the coolest mastermind around because she's talking a lot about neuroscience, which, you know, I happen to be biased. I'm a little bit of a geek towards that. And also just, I mean, productivity and just general badassery as an entrepreneur. And so, um, oh, thank you. good friend of mine, so and I'm super here. excited. Super excited to have her. Yeah, and I mean, heck, she comes to Los Angeles all the time. She comes to the southern coast of California. So it gets me excited because, you know, we're around each other a lot and pretty soon in person. So True that. We need to talk about that, too. The collab. Perfect. The JV. The, the JV. The joint venture. The, the junior varsity. Absolutely. The junior varsity. Talking about. The okay. junior varsity. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Brooke, so I feel like we have a lot of cool things in common. And I feel like we've also recently been talking about some sort of 
revolving around each other conversations. And I'm really curious about what's been really interesting or what's been exciting for you as of late, like what's been on your mind. Yeah. So um, I love the fact, so like we chatted like vaguely briefly, you guys, like before we got on here. So like, we're both just kind of winging it. Um, I know Matthew's doing a lot of like collaborating right now. And I love the fact that you're talking about community all over the place. Yeah. Um, what I noticed is like, so I just came back from LA. So I was in LA for two weeks. As you know, I was at a rich living intensive. And to be perfectly honest, like I'm still processing from that intensive because it was so sort of like mind blowing on lots of different levels. Mm. And, and really starting to like integrate this whole balance between masculine and feminine energy. And by mm. the way, when people used to talk about like feminine energy, I used to kind of like roll my eyes and be like, barf, like, what is that? What are you talking about? Right. Um, because I was in resistance to my own basically. Right. So what I'm seeing, mm. and I did a lot about this in my group is that, you know, there's so much like nuance involved with relationship, with community, with like being in a business with running a business. So like running a business, like there's so many moments where you're like, you have to be a masculine. You have to be in that single focused mindset. You have to be creating. And what I'm noticing is like masculine energy truly is about creating something from nothing. So like when you decide to go mm. create a client, when you decide to go create a sale, when you decide to go create a mastermind, when you decide to go create anything, like you are, you are taking a void where there was once nothing. And then you're going to so create good. something to fill it. Right. Cool. And so like, can we, Brooke, can space. we, Brooke, can I stop you for just a moment? Yeah. Can we give just some, just some quick t context for those who aren't as familiar with the masculine feminine conversation? Cause I think sometimes, at least I know myself, I tend to associate masculine as like, that means that's a man thing and feminine. Mm -hmm. That's a woman thing. Thank you for clarifying that. I just assume yeah. everybody knows what I'm talking right. about. Right. We just, <laughs> Uh, same. I do the same thing. But can you give like a little bit more context for what when you're describing the essences of, of that kind of thing? Or I can too. Yeah, so, that's... you know, if you look at nature, for example, there's there's a masculine component, there's a feminine component. I, do, I don't necessarily mean when I say masculine, I mean man, and I don't mean feminine as woman. I just mean like there's an energetic component in, in all humans that like we have a doing side and we have a receiving side. So in order to thrive in your life, you have to be able to take action, make decisions, make choices, move yourself in a direction, create things, right? Like strategize, plan, all those things are like build energy, yeah. build, create, because they are linear sort of single focused momentum oriented, um, yeah. action, really. Hey, Suzanne. And good to see you. Keep going. Hey, Sorry. Um, yeah, I'm reading the Queen's Code right now, Elisa. It's amazing. So feminine energy is the opposite. It's a pervasive kind of radiant, um, almost peripheral energy, where it's about mm. appreciating and receiving and allowing and nurturing. So it's like, we all have these components to us, and they're both necessary in life, and they're absolutely mm. both necessary in business. It's just that, you know, for me as a, as a woman in business, it's really easy to get like hyper focused on the doing and the and the deciding and the forcing and the structuring and the strategies, right? But I have to remind myself to like sink back into my body and like allow and receive. Um, mm. because we're just taught that business means basically masculine, like do the thing, create the thing, go there, go hustle, yeah. right? Hey Lindsay. Absolutely. Hey, um, so that's what I mean. Like, I don't, when I say the word masculine, I don't mean man. And when I say feminine, I don't mean woman. It's, right. it's sort of like yin and yang, right? That's what I was just going to bring up. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the two opposing polarities that, that create the universe, right? That, that, that like enact all of this. So, you know, and another way that I've heard it as well as in the universe, there are two things, there's energy and there's structure to hold that energy. And yeah. so otherwise, without it, like without the banks of the river, that you don't really have a river because it just kind of dissipates and it just goes into different areas and you don't have an actual contained body of water. So, totally. yeah, I think that's that's a really great way of putting it. So so there, we're saying, if anything, that there are qualities to these particular different essences. And so what what Brooke is speaking to more is that so much um, and sorry to give pre context but i think this is just helpful okay. for the broader so, conversation totally and right i 
Yeah, well, and I, and I love that, though. And actually, this, the irony of this, right, is like the masculine coming in and giving structure as you're being the feminine, enjoying the energy and the fun, <laughs> the play of it. I love that. It's around, and you're providing yeah. you know, it's great. That's Perfect. so good. And, and, so, uh, and so, yeah, I think that that's a really vital and important thing. What, what Brooke is speaking to is that as entrepreneurs, it can, especially when you're just getting started in your business, and I think both you and I tend to work with people, I, I guess I can't quote exactly for you, but me is usually in the two to five year range in someone's business, and, and sometimes even just getting started out. Um, but where they're finding these levels of the, the feminine aspects of, of the entrepreneurial lifestyle that just are missing completely. And I think totally. what you're experiencing in your life as well as, is totally. this level of receivership. So, yeah, and awesome. I think it's an interesting piece that like, I think a lot of people can relate to this. Like there's a certain amount of like all that masculine energy of the doing and deciding and creating and going and like determination and drive and ambition, like that will get you so far, it got me really far. And then I hit a wall and my wall mm. came around like, I think December of last year, where I was like consistently, this is gonna sound kind of bratty, I was consistently hitting like 10 and 15K months, but yeah. I knew that like I had a, a deeper capacity for more income and more impact and like more clients and like more of myself. Mm. But I didn't know how to access that because I was like in the masculine so much of like action, Ooh. action, action, massive action, right? So I think a lot of people, myself included, my clients included, we all hit that wall at some point because yeah. life wants us to get back into balance. Our bodies want us to get back into balance. And so mm -hmm. I think honestly, that's what burnout is, is when mm -hmm. your body is basically like, you're you're in your masculine too much like get back into receiving mode and honestly like that diligent like intentional placement of myself back into receiving and back into joy and back mm. into my heart and back into my body was the thing that left me out of those of that income was like how do i receive more yes i'm still creating Right. Yes, I'm still taking action. I'm not just sitting around receiving all day. But there is this interesting thing that happens for entrepreneurs, which is coincidentally, I think, also the moment that community becomes so important for us is when mm. we're like, I'm doing all the things, I'm helping all the people, and I'm feeling like there's a void or I'm feeling like I'm not being nurtured enough. Right. So this, this like longing for feminine energy comes. And then suddenly you see entrepreneurs, I did this too, like, where's my people? I need community too. I need support too. I need more friends. I need more Matthews. Like, I need more Nathaniels, right? To, yeah. like, have that space for all of us to be, like, supported and held. And I know that sounds cheesy, but that's totally what happened for me. And I think yeah. we all kind of hit this. For me, it was like after a hard like two years in my business and like six months of like really going for it, I hit yeah. that wall and I was like, I need more, not even more money. Like I just needed more. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. That's so good. And I was actually just talking to somebody today too. And I think that that also comes at a certain point in our business where we move through um, there's also, I think for a lot of us, like a lot of shame of like, I, like I, I'm smart. I should be able to figure this out. Like why, like when we're in that doing, totally. doing, doing mode and it's so like, great. it's like, so why? Mind. Yeah. Masculine yeah, like, is why? like the mind energy too. And feminine is yes. more like the soul energy. Yeah. So like Elisa brings up a good point. Like we have to have both. Like I am not Absolutely. in any way, shape or form saying like, like stop with the masculine so that you can focus on your feminine. No, I'm just saying, like, learn to seamlessly transition between the two of them when you need to. Your body is always going to tell you when that is, right? Yeah. Your body's always giving you signals, like, shift into action or shift into receiving. Yeah, that's so good. And I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck. And this is the work that both you and I do is, I think, is when they get it stuck in one, either the on switch or the off switch, and they're not necessarily... Um, the two and I think that's where you know I typically say that I help overwhelmed entrepreneurs really master their physical energy and their time so that they can contribute and create more with ease but I think that that yeah. is is really a byproduct of just this of being able to balance 
that masculine aspect of the driving and the doing and even the like going outward but then also like the coming inward and the and like you said the receiving and it's that it's that uh that weaving of the two and i think that yeah. as entrepreneurs we can get caught in either workaholism or playaholism and <laughs> because because here's the funny thing that's so cool about entrepreneurship that i love and that you love too brooke is that there's no freaking boss. Like nobody is telling you what the hell to do. So you get to make it up as you go. No, it's so great. Yeah, it is. It's great. And it's also horrible, you know, yeah. when you first get started because there is no one giving you the instruction manual or the, the, like the booklet of like how to actually do this and how to do it the right way. And so that's why people talk about entrepreneurship as being one of the most spiritual experiences that you can have or the most spiritual practices because it's like personal development on steroids. Totally. It's like the, totally. in my opinion, entrepreneurship, when you really do it the right way is the epitome of spirituality. Yeah. I have, I've been practicing all kinds of spirituality for like probably like 18, 19 years intentionally at least. And like mm. owning my own business, like an aligned business has by far taught me more about myself, more about life, more about universe, more about everything than like any of that other stuff did, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's so powerful when you do have a boss and of course, and there's nothing about knocking anyone who has a nine to five. I think that's fantastic. Um, but there's also a level of structure and safety that that gives you that when you don't have that, it's like, you have to you have create, to create that, create that, for that on your own. Yeah. That's yeah. Why, like, and that's, at least his comment was so fitting. Cause like you do have to create your own structure. Right. Yeah. It's interesting too, to me, because like, I was thinking about, you know, most of the people that I work with are high achievers. It's a lot easier to balance high achievers with um, helping them learn to receive and balance that than it is to take really feminine energy and try to teach like how to take massive action or take, you know, masculine yeah. based action, which is, I think why there's like a, there's a, like a chasm right now in the spiritual community because a lot of spiritual practices or spiritual communities are very much in feminine and like very little action. So there's not a whole lot of movement and you don't see a lot of change. Like it's all like willy nilly. Ah! And they don't have the structure, yeah. the action in place to actually move their, their life forward. Right. And for right. me, like it's been a lot harder to like try to um, teach really passive people to be more assertive than it is to work with entrepreneurs because most entrepreneurs are already there. They're already action driven. They're already in this high achievement mode um, or they're passive people who see us all doing really well and they want that. Right. So I, I do see a lot of entrepreneurs mm -hmm. that aren't making it because they don't have enough drive because they're in totally. passive energy too much. And then like I've yes. worked with clients like this where it feels like you're sort of dragging it along because they don't have that naturally. So it's interesting. I, I don't know what your experience is with that, but like, do you find that it's easier to work with people that are already in achievement mode and then bringing them back into their heart? Or do you find that it's easier to work with people who are so deeply in their heart and then bringing them back into their mind? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if for me, it's like, I wouldn't even necessarily say easier. I mean, for me, it's a lot harder to get somebody to massive action because I mean, that's just not my gift set. I think about, you know, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk or like Grant Cardone or like those guys that are like, that are very, that is what they're really good at. And that's just not my thing. And even at this, at this place in my career, I'm, I cringe at it a little bit, but I understand that there are people that, like you said, that are super in their hearts and just really need like a kick in the ass. And sometimes like, that's what they need is that really like swift kick of like, you got this, like freaking go do it now. And, and I'm in a phase and where I really love to teach is like you said, the people that are, that are achieving really highly and, and but are also feeling like there's a glass ceiling on what they're doing. And, and also are kind of sitting in like, you know, I mean, if you're somebody who's like been like taking personal loans from family and friends in order to keep your business afloat or like or um, or have been kind of sitting for like nine to 12 months in this like kind of frozen, kind of burnt out, kind of like you said, Brooke, of like, or maybe of, like pregnant. Sorry, you said or, or maybe months. you're pregnant. <laughs> the entrepreneurship <laughs> pregnancy phase. <laughs> exactly. And maybe you're pregnant. And, you know, and I think. And I think um, too, but if you're somebody who also is like forced to take naps, like you, like 
like that was something for me was like I my body literally could not do anything but nap some days when I was super burnt out and so a lot of yes but but you wanted to take one though Right, totally but you wanted to. to take a nap. I, I had the like most of the day off, so I really just let myself enjoy yeah. and be grateful and like let my body do what it wanted to do and it wanted to kind of lay around and be like a cat. So yeah. like I, I had the, the benefit and the opportunity to do that because yeah. I didn't have things until later on today. So it's beautiful so too, like how you get to design your schedule around, you know, this this sort of like the glass ceiling piece and like noticing like when you're on, when you're off, when you need to rest, when you don't and allowing the space to like have your schedule accommodate for that, which is so important, I think for entrepreneurs too. Um, Because when I started out in my business, like I didn't know this really. I didn't know that like I was allowed to design my schedule. I just sort of like, I think everybody's like this in the beginning where it's like, you're just sort of taking the clients whenever they come and you're accommodating their schedule and they're, you're accommodating the days that they're free. Um, sometimes you're even accommodating the prices they want. Right. And so it wasn't until like later on in my business that I realized like, this doesn't feel sustainable. I'm not enjoying this. Like I, I took the leap to become an entrepreneur because I, I wanted to enjoy myself more and enjoy my life and have freedom and mm-hmm. really help people in a full capacity that like nine to five could not give me because it was like the structure of it did not jive with my alignment like at all. And then I, you, you sort of like accidentally recreate what you know. Right. So like right after I got out of nine to five or like out of the sort of like the man work environment, I did notice that I had like kind of accidentally recreated some of that, like the hustle mentality and the, you know, having to work, all day long mentality or at least get busy all day long mentality right so i had to be like this is not what i want how do i want my day to look do i want time for naps yes do i want time to play yes do i want to finish my day at five sure sometimes like or i'll go on a live with matthew cook until seven like you know what i mean like whatever feels good Um, but it's not about like i see this happening so much like Um, I made a post the other day about, you know, how focusing more on my happiness was really a missing link for me to like jump into the next level income wise. Mm. And it was so interesting because I know what that means for myself. Happiness is like really cultivating it physiologically. And hey, Nathaniel, I'm really cultivating my vibration and really letting myself truly appreciate things. And there is you know, movement there and there's action there and there's gratitude there. Right. And Mm. a lot of people, when they heard like, just be happy, they take it to like this complacent level. Like, Mm. Oh yeah. Like I'm just going to do whatever I want so I can be content all day long. Or like, I just want to be lazy. Like, and I'm like, shit, like people are totally misinterpreting that word. Mm. Right. For like an excuse to sort of rest on your laurels yeah we hear this like you do you boo or like just do what makes you happy but follow your bliss really yeah. mean what happy means yeah they mean like what's the least amount of work that i can do to get by so that i can just be content right right so as these people were commenting on my post i was like wow like my my definition of happiness is not the same it's yeah. like so much fuller. Yeah. 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 Well, and I think for you and I too, Brooke, and I think a lot of the people that are probably watching this right now too, there's a level of like the happiness for me also includes like, um, and uh, Joseph Campbell, the guy who said, follow your bliss. He later said on his deathbed, like, I wish I would have actually said, follow your grunt because that in lies your, your bliss. And, and I think that that's what you, you're getting at too, is this level of like, man, if I just like went after that thing, like my soul is like pulling me towards like it's not always actually going to be awesome like most days it's going to freaking suck i shouldn't say most days there are going to be days that it's going to really suck right like because i'm being pulled in this direction but i think like the yeah like kind of being thrown by your whims like that, that there's nothing solid in that that can actually pull you through to happiness like Right. It's like you kind of end up just kind of being hit around like a ping pong ball, which doesn't Mm -hmm. actually lead to any sustainable um, lasting change or happiness. So, yeah. I'm having this idea like we could create this like list of like new vocabulary words or like new definitions. Yeah. 
because I think a lot of words are like this, like bullet, like follow your bliss, right? I think a lot of people, um, I think the first time that I read that quote, it was just maybe like, I don't know, 10 years ago or something. And yeah. I kind of assumed that he meant like, follow your euphoria. Because yeah. I was in this like super spiritual phase of my life, right? Yeah. Where I was sort of like in a spiritual bypass, to be honest. This was like maybe 2007. And mm -hmm. so I was like, follow your euphoria. Yes, yes. And like, that's not what he meant at all. No. <laughs> like, it's a totally different definition. Like, bliss is like, it's not about like, fleeting high or fleeting dopamine rush it's like a it's like the feeling that that arises when you hit your alignment and you follow it like a trail mm. do you know what i mean it's like so the good. feeling that arises when you know that you are on a soul quest yeah you Ooh. know what i mean and like all yep. the things happening are like breadcrumbs or stepping stones and like yeah. some of them are really uncomfortable and like awkward but you're you're so like in that flow or like in that zone or in that channel of alignment like that's what bliss feels like to me mm -hmm. is like you've you've hit this channel right and then suddenly like everything else looks different the world looks different you're 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 acting you're, everything it's hard to describe like if you're not in the mindset if you haven't hit the channel yet it's so hard to like make this vocabulary land yeah i don't know if that makes no, I think I think it makes I think it makes tremendous sense. And I think that's something that we need to be continuously speaking into and really like letting people feel that because I think it can be a transmission that like there are days that absolutely suck. And there are days that you're going to continue to just keep cracking at it and just keep chipping away at it. And eventually it's going to come and you're going to keep moving forward and you're going to keep doing it and building momentum and doing the things. And that is actually where the bliss is, is in building that momentum towards that thing. It's not in like the it's not in like the here and now necessarily in every single moment but it's in like the 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 striving towards that thing um and it's it, like being quote, unattached to the time like, frame what is that quote it's like um it feels like when the vision starts pulling you so like when you're not Ooh, that's so good I need a pepper. and the vision starts mm -hmm. pulling you mm -hmm. it's a shit there's a huge shift there where so, it's like you've gotten on this roller coaster suddenly and like not a roller coaster you've gotten on a boat and then suddenly the boat's just taking you like there's there's not as much effort necessary anymore yeah but there's still action it's a really interesting thing to talk about because i we talk, we say like you know in the entrepreneur world or like the spiritual community it's like do less and be more and like it's so much less effort and it can come off as like i'm not doing anything but flipping my hair all day and i have shit tons of clients that just roll into my into my messenger and I, all i'm doing is just sitting here looking pretty like no yeah it does feel like less effort, but it's not lazy. It's just you getting pulled. Yeah, getting pulled. I love that. Yeah, mean? that feels Yeah, that feels so true. I think it's like when it becomes something that's larger than you are, something that like um that it becomes like you wake up every morning thinking about that person in your mind. Like that's like that, that you're really there to like actually be helping or supporting or, or uplifting. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a coach or if you're a marketer or if you're in real estate or whoever it is, but that, that there's like, there's such a clear image of like who um, that person is on the other side and really seeing them continuing to be lifted up and fulfilled and, and totally encountering more and more happiness and greatness and all those things in their lives. And um, you're right. I think to follow your bliss when put from a lens of like the egoic, like, it's like, what's going to make me happy right now versus yeah. the, this level of like, what's going to like continue to drive that, that thing forward. That's going to help more and more people. What's up, Dave? So what's up, Dave? Yeah, I, mean, I want to, this is interesting too, Matthew. Like I want somebody, maybe we can do this together in our book that we're writing together. Um, Let's I really want to research like, the different chemical composition of what this bliss that we're talking about actually is. Because it doesn't feel like just straight up dopamine. It doesn't feel like straight up serotonin. It doesn't feel like straight up norepinephrine, right? It feels like yeah. something else to me. And I would really like somebody to like get in my brain when I'm in that current because I, it, there, it's, it's something different than yeah. that fleeting rush, you know? I'd yeah, be really you know what else to too? Yeah, that's, I would be very interested too, because I think some people might watch this and replayers, feel free to comment up on this if you know. I imagine a lot of people are going to be like, oh, you know what, it's the flow state. 
and it's and it's actually and it's like yes but it's also not like it's 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 like it's not necessarily always that i think that there's a different chemical right like and i'm seeing you shake your head too like i think there's something else going on there because mm -hmm. the flow state is actually the sort of in the moment bliss it's like this level of like everything is like awesome and like and i and i am one track focused but it's like there's this level of like bliss things going off there mm -hmm. versus um it's almost like resiliency is more what we're looking towards or like um or grit or like there's like this like it consistent feels like, a gene, like some sort of it's like a something gets activated in your dna or something it almost feels like a gene gets turned on Ooh. do you know what i mean that like wasn't turned on before Ooh. that's so cool we have to talk that. about this <laughs> what's up sonella good to see you girl Sonella, I miss her. Okay, yeah. Well, let's definitely Making talk about this more. Of like, what are the things we need to research after this after this live stream? Absolutely, we'll get our assistants on that. Hey, have you hired your assistant yet? Not yet. Okay, cool. But it's coming. It's coming. Totes. It's coming. I'm hiring mine at the end of the week. So exciting. Um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about belonging. And I know this isn't something that like something you've been necessarily jamming on, but I want to hear your thoughts on this too. Is um, for me, I grew up so much as the lone wolf. And what's fascinating, oh, I think my, is that my earbuds are dying? I think my earbuds are dying. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Great. As I grew up with the lone wolf and that was this muscle and, and some people don't always resonate at first blush because I knew everyone. Mm. Like everyone thought Matthew was like the cool, mysterious guy who like no one super knew and like, but he was, but like, but he was cool and he always like slipped in, said the cool thing and then like peaced out. And it was because I was terrified to like actually belong and mm -hmm. get close to anybody. And I had this deep fear and I, and I have this, this sneaking suspicion and hypothesis of a lot of entrepreneurs that actually feel like they're too much or feel like, like the world can't really handle all of my awesome, you know? And it's like this level of like, um, but at the end of the day, we just like, we really do like as humans, we just want to belong. Like we just, we really like, as you were mentioning earlier, like community, like we really, really want someone to give a damn. Like we really I want someone to happened. care about us. I think you're right. I, I mean, the big leap talks about this. Like there's, mm -hmm. there's like four different reasons why we all have glass ceilings. And one of them is to like, not betray our family or not be too big or not get too too successful because we're going to lose something in the process but honestly like in order to belong as social creatures like from a very young age we're all like editing and censoring and tweaking ourselves so that we mm -hmm. get more approval or so that we get more love or so that we can get more attention so from like you know as soon as we can perceive really we're sort of starting to like edit and shift and like how can I get mommy to pay more attention to me? How can I yeah, get dad? Kind of to Photoshop a little bit. Yeah, like how can I make myself smaller or bigger or more invisible or whatever so that I can feel like I have a home or I can feel like I belong? Like, I mean, I did that consciously when I was um, in high school. This is going to sound snobby, but I'm over that fucking belief about sounding like a snob. So I'm just going to say this. <laughs> um, that I, I was like kind of bullied for being super smart. So I always got like A pluses and like placed out of classes. I was like sent off to the AP courses. Um, but I got like teased really hard for that to the mm -hmm. point where like when I would get my papers handed back to me, I like put my thumb over my grade as soon as I possibly could because I didn't want people to see it because they were going to look wow. at me with like disapproval or like, oh my God, you're such a nerd or like, oh my God, there you go getting an A plus again. So it like... I felt alienated because of my smarts. And so because of all those years of like trying to feel like I belonged and I couldn't, when I went to college, I intentionally made a decision to like dumb myself down. Mm. Like I didn't tell anybody, I, I tried to like really censor my language so that people didn't see me as really smart because I didn't want to suffer the consequences of not belonging. Looking back, of course, like I didn't have to do it that way but I, I, that's what I chose. And I spent the next like five years understating myself so that I could have friends. Yeah, wow. Um, and so it and took me Dave a while actually just said that, similarly said, I, yeah. I, feel, I fear that if I play at my real size or volume, I will be rejected. Totally, yeah. Dave. I totally yeah. hear you on that. Like, Amen. I still, I mean, I know that I have that belief and that pattern 
Um, and it's, it's, it's constantly and slowly sort of sloughing off. Um, I still have that pattern in relationships. Like, am I too much for this person? Um, I still will notice it come up when I try to post online. Like, is this too much? And I finally got to a point about a month ago where I was like, fuck it. Hmm. <laughs> right? Like, I need to play big. I need to be myself because not being my full self is, is feeling like suffering to me. Yeah. Right? Well, and I think, and I think what's so hard, too, is so many of us didn't get met there as kids or, or as young adults, like we didn't feel fully met there. So it's totally. this fear that it's like, if I go past that point, I'm just going to fall off the cliff and there won't be anyone to catch me. The interesting what's thing interesting, is, well, oh, we're about to say the same thing, is that probably when I did blaze through that and be like, fuck yeah. it, I'm just going to be myself. I started meeting people like you and I started meeting people that actually were meeting me where I was. And I was like, yes fuck, why did nobody tell me this like 10 years ago? <laughs> totally. Because, you know, I say this all the time. When you be who you really are, you become a magnet for what you really want. <laughs> so when I started being who I really was, and let me tell you, there's probably more layers that are coming still, right? When I started yeah. being who I really am, you showed up and like other friends showed up and these collaborations showed up, LA showed up, all these people at this intensive and 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 Santa Monica showed up like all these people showed up like they're still yeah. showing up still showing right? up yeah. and like I watched one of Dave's lives the other day and like his energy is like blazing and I fucking loved it because I was like yes somebody else who's like doing the thing right and I totally resonated so I want to share this with you with people who are watching too because like the thing that you're most afraid of doesn't actually happen like dropping off the yeah. cliff when you are all of you doesn't actually happen you actually yeah. do get met, it's a, but you have to yeah. take the leap before you get met. It's so interesting. You know All what it is. All were right. Yeah, it's funny. It's actually like you jump off and then you actually like land in the elevator that actually like takes you up to the next floor. Yeah. And it's like they're actually like all these other people in the elevator and they're like, you're so freaking cool, dude. Like, like we have you been? Today, I've been waiting for you for years. Yeah. Like, we've all been hanging out up here in the penthouse. Like, where have you been? And I'm like, yeah, there's a penthouse. <laughs> I guess there's a penthouse. Great. Yeah. And I think that, that this is like probably the most potent thing we've talked about today. I mean, we've said so many awesome things, but I think for people to really catch that and like really land that today is like, to know that they're, and I don't know how to get that into you right now, not you, Brooke, but the people, it's like, there, there really are going to be people there because the thing is that the more that you're you, the less effort it actually is, which yep. seems counterintuitive because we feel like we have to like work extra hard to like be more, but it's like, no, it's actually less effort. So you can show up like that even more and more and more. And then, yeah, there are more and more people that are going to congruently stand around you and be like, Let's lift this dude up. Let's lift this gal up. And there's and just so much up, more to go around. They will show up out of the blue too. Like I was, I was just driving home from something on Friday afternoon, I think. And, you know, I kind of vacillate sometimes. I'm like, I feel like there aren't enough 